Hello, my name is Timothy Sullivan, and I'm here to talk to you today about premium sake. Today's video is sponsored by Jfudo and Jetro New York. These are two Japanese government agencies that promote sake outside of Japan. Today we're going to talk about sake for wine lovers. Now I know a lot of you really enjoy wine, and we all know those occasions when we want to enjoy wine. You can think about a summer picnic, or maybe your birthday party, or maybe a casual night at home with friends and family. There's lots of occasions when we enjoy wine, but I'm here to tell you that premium sake is a wonderful substitute for wine. The first sake I want to introduce you to is right here. This is Watare Bune 55 Junmai Ginjo. This is a sake from Ibaraki Prefecture. And Watare Bune is the name of the rice strain that they use when brewing this sake. The interesting thing is that the brewer revived this rice strain that had gone dormant. So it is an heirloom rice variety that you won't find elsewhere in Japan. I compare this sake very favorably to a Sauvignon Blanc style wine. It's medium bodied, medium acidity, very, very gently fruity, and just a hint of an herbal note. I'm gonna try it with one of my favorite cheeses, which is an aged Parmesan cheese. Mm, this pairing is absolutely delicious. Parmesan is very special. Not only is it salty and a little bit creamy, but it also has umami. That is the secret word for pairing Japanese sake with non-Japanese food. Umami is that savory deliciousness that you may find in soy sauce or tomato sauce or Parmesan cheese. Now this has a salty component as well and it really brings out the umami in the sake. It's a delicious pairing. Another style of wine that is very popular around the world is sparkling wine. Luckily, we have great sparkling sake as well. Today we have a great example from Hyogo Prefecture called Mio. Now when you look at this sake in the glass, you can see a wonderful delicate mousse on top, and some very, very fine bubbles. Giving it a smell, it really hints at a gentle sweetness. You get the aroma of muscat grape, or even melon. Now when it comes to food pairing for this sparkling, I may surprise you. I'm actually gonna be looking at pairing this with a pistachio. This type of nut has a saltiness to it, but a very gentle, creamy sweetness as well. The sweetness in the sparkling sake really brought out the sweetness in the pistachio. If you can imagine pistachio ice cream and sparkling sake, that would be a wonderful pairing. I really do hope you'll try this at home. Very often when people finish a meal at a restaurant, they like to have a dessert wine. You can think of it like a sauterne or a sherry. There's many styles of these sweet, more viscous wines out there to enjoy. Now in the world of sake, we have something very similar that I wanna introduce you to now. Here we have an example of what's called a nigori sake. Now, nigori means cloudy or murky in English. The brand that we have here is called Tozai Snow Maiden, and it's from Kyoto. When you make nigori, you leave a little bit of the rice starch in the sake, and that's what makes it white. Now, this really impacts the texture and also the sweetness of the sake, and that's where we get the similarity to dessert wine. Now, for all the food we have here, what should we pair it with? my eye is immediately drawn to this beautiful blue cheese. Mm. Now this is what I would call a match made in heaven. The creamy textures mirror each other beautifully and the dry finish on our nigori really cleanses the palate from the creaminess of the cheese. 
There are many styles of sake out there, but sometimes you just want to enjoy something clean and easy drinking. You know, I'm thinking of something like a Pinot Gris. We have something like that in the world of sake. It's called Junmai Shu. Now, Junmai Shu is a grade of sake that is generally clean, crisp, and easy drinking. And I think all of you Pinot Gris lovers out there are really gonna like Junmai Shu. I have an example here. This is from a brewery in Fukushima Prefecture, Homare Sake Brewery. And this is their beautiful Aladdin bottle. Let's give it a smell. So this sake smells clean, a little bit of rice aroma, but overall light and really delicious. I really like to pair this with one of my favorite snacks. I'm talking about prosciutto di Parma. Very delicious. Now the prosciutto has a little bit of a salty edge to it but the dry, clean component of this Junmai Sake really cleanses your palate. And I think for all the white wine lovers out there, please check out Junmai Shu Sake. I think you'll be surprised and really enjoy this pairing. There are other wonderful types of wine. Let's talk about red wine, for example. There are types of red wine that I really love. One that comes to mind is the California Cabs. Those are rich, fruity, jammy, and juicy. They're really popular, and they are a little bit higher in alcohol too. If you like that style of wine, let me direct you to a style called Junmai Daiginjo in the world of sake. Junmai Daiginjo sakes are the super premium grade and they're very juicy, fruity, and velvety on the palate. Another type of red wine that's more classic and old world is Bordeaux. Bordeaux styles of wine are very well known for having higher tannins. Now tannins come from the skins and parts of the vine that get into the fermentation. They lend a woody, drying character to the wine. So if you like old world Bordeaux red wines. Think about trying a style called Kimoto or Yamaha. These are styles of sake that are brewed with a little bit longer fermentation period. This allows for a deeper, more rich, earthy, and robust flavor. When I teach sake classes, a lot of wine lovers who come to my class ask me about this word terroir. Have you heard of it? Terroir means kind of a sense of place for the wine producer, the type of soil, the geography, and how all of these contribute to the flavor of the wine. Do we have this in sake? In a way we do. Let me explain. Many people assume that the rice that we use to make premium sake contributes an equal amount as grapes do to the flavor of a wine. But that's not really the case. In the world of premium sake, interestingly, we look much more to the type of water source that is used for that given sake. One example is water source from the north of Japan is very often snowmelt water, very soft, very low in minerality and this will produce regional styles of sake that are cleaner, crisper, and lighter. The far west of Japan is known for using well water, which is richer in minerals. It's harder water, and this produces sake that is generally more rich and full-bodied in that region. So in that way, there's a unique way of looking at terroir in the world of sake. What I have right here is a standard wine bottle, and around the world, this bottle is gonna contain 750 milliliters of wine. And that's the standard pretty much anywhere you go. But in the world of sake, we do things a little bit differently. The bottle you see right next to it here, this is a standard sake bottle. 
And inside here, you're gonna find 720 milliliters. That's almost exactly 24 ounces of sake. So just a little bit less. And you may be wondering, why are things different in the world of sake? Well, it all starts with the single serving measurement for sake. In Japanese, we call this a go, and it's 180 milliliters of sake. One serving to enjoy with your food. Now, there are four of those goes inside this bottle. If you're in the mood for a little bit more, you can move up to what we would call the magnum of the sake world. This is a 1.8 liter bottle of sake. We call this ishobi in Japanese. And there are 10 of those single go servings inside this bottle. Once a sake bottle is opened, keep it sealed and keep it in the refrigerator. And you can enjoy it for several weeks to come. Enjoying sake is one of the best way to bring people together. And I hope that you'll enjoy these premium sakes with your loved ones.